Hello everyone and welcome back. Two days ago Microsoft announced, or three days ago, that .NET 5, which is basically a totally new a milestone in the world of software development and .NET especially. A lot of new improvements for the APIs, for the ASP.NET Core performance or the .NET apps in general, and specifically for Blazor. So a lot of new features are waiting for us out there and this is why we need, before we proceed with any other features, is to migrate our apps, the API and the, the API and the client application to .NET 5. So basically the migration process is going to be very easy because we are on ASP.NET Core 3.1 so basically the changes are not that much and here Microsoft has a full a blog post about how you can or in the documentation how you can migrate your currently ASP.NET Core 3.1 apps to uh, .NET 5. So basically to get started I'm going to uh, get help with this uh, article. So what we need to do first, let's go first to the, our Blazor application. So if we double click here on the project, what you can see here is it's based on .NET Standard 2.1. So basically you need to get rid of the Razor language version and you change the target framework to uh, .NET 5. Just like this I think. Yeah, just fine. Point o, just like this. And at the top, you need to set that the SDK is Blazor WebAssembly. And doing like that, this is cool. Another thing you should do is uh, you should get rid of this build here. And also, yeah, another step that we should do is, yeah, we should upgrade this to the version, to the fifth version, like that, and even the Microsoft MSL library to have the latest version of the security authentication, the extensions as well. Okay, so this is cool. Right now, if I close this app and I click save, You'll notice here that right now it's restoring the packages, getting all the packages, and that's it. Here we go. Right now we are on .NET 5 for this place. Right now we can, we, we, we have the instant refresh in the browser. We can have the isolation of the CSS for each component. We have the virtualization. We will go through all this uh, amazing feature throughout the course when we will start with the uh, client side part. So right now we are done from the client. Let's go back to the server and do the same here for this project. You leave this the same and this one you should make it net 5.0 and this one we should leave it. And basically there is some improvements here. We should upgrade the libraries of entity framework. So Okay, what I'm going to do is I will close this one just to be sure about the version of the libraries and I will right click here, go to manage new git packages. Okay. Then I'll go to updates. Okay, both need updates. And I'll click update here. Cool, so this is this part is done. What we still have to do is to upgrade the entity framework version on the models project. So again, I'm going to click on manage new packages and choose this one and this one. Let's go for that, choose and click update. Okay. Ah, here we got an error. Ah, yeah, sorry for that. If we right click here, properties, this one should be .NET Standard 2.1. So let's make it like that and save this. And then we will try to upgrade this library again. I think we need to do the same for all the .NET Standard libraries we have in our project. All of those libraries should be on the .NET Standard 2.1. So, okay, cool. So yeah, we will get this error that .NET 
always not compatible with okay and let's just make it like that here as well and for the shared project we still have this infrastructure one so i'll take it then i'll click save and okay let me see the restore packages okay everything is great right now now that's cool we still have a little change that we have to do basically we need to go right now the changes will be on the level of Azure for the client application and this is why um, Microsoft right now we are we, we with the old version of Blazor we were working on the it's using the MSAL library which is the Microsoft authentication library version one and that version has some like restriction on the level of the portal so if you go here let, let's see and then I'll go to app registrations Okay, so we have the tickets server and the tickets client. So basically, we'll go to the tickets client, tickets basket client. Okay, this is the project. If I go to the authentication here, you'll get a little note here that, okay, uh, it's a single page application. And here you'll, you should see something that msal.gs2 doesn't support implicit grant enable settings only if you are using msal 1.0. So right now we are on the msal latest version. So what we should do is to disable the access tokens and ID tokens and then okay we should save this okay disable and after that I will go to the um, API permissions here and we should add okay they are here offline access and open ID so that's cool that's cool now I will go back to the client project and another you should add two things right now for the default scoops you need to add the offline access and the open ID so those should be added to the default scoops available here so I will uh, duplicate this by clicking ctrl D and here I will add offline access and then I will add this scoop which is open ID. So basically if you go here which is this one and this one and in this case we are done from the client side part. Now we should go to the server side part here and also slightly changes should happen. Okay here I have a, an extension method called add b2c authentication and if I click f12 and go to the definition and what you can see here is it's using this library to um, basically implement the authentication and verifying the access token that's coming from the client to make sure that okay it's a valid user and right now you see this green light and it says okay Azure B2C authentication here the not add Azure B2C barrier token is obsolete will be removed in the future versions so we should move basically to um, uh, which it's a new library released by Microsoft it was in the preview edition for a long time but it's it didn't release with the uh, .NET 5 it, it was like just before that a little bit it's called uh, microsoft.identity.web and that basically wraps all the steps for us that you basically do with uh, registering your authentication service and malware and all this stuff so right now we should migrate to that by basically it's going to be easy but we can say add Microsoft identity web API authentication we call this function and if I click control uh, okay it should suggest the name of the library for me but okay anyway I can go to the NuGet and install it myself it's called Microsoft dot identity the web okay so
that's great and now let me add this here cool so let's add Microsoft identity web API authentication yeah and then here we should add the configuration and the name of uh, the config section and it's called Azure add B2C it's like this okay see I think it's capital letter and let's go to app settings and have a look yeah it is like that and I will add that here and this is interesting right now so I will run the app to make sure that everything is working fine I'm just worrying about the authentication if I missed anything but okay let's see and here we go the loading time should be reduced and yeah that's it you cannot the difference directly from the loading page especially right now you cannot this more when you are running this app in production so before you do anything or clicking the login button you should refresh the cache or clear the cache of your browser for this website because the old mcell library the gs related with the webassembly dot mcell authentication library should be updated so make sure to click control f5 to refresh your application and clean the cache so right now you have all the new gs libraries and all this stuff so let's click login and make sure that everything is just working fine cool it's asking me to log in i will log in here my credentials and interesting okay the authentication is just working fine on the client side now if we click on fidget data we will see that if everything on the server side is working fine and we should wait a little bit and oops we get an error so let's see what we have here and if i go check the console fail to fetch the data connection refused okay uh, uh is the api is down or something like this okay i will run the api again maybe something went wrong with the visual studio yeah i've, I've you should upgrade your visual studio to the version 19.8 I upgraded that there is some mistakes I'm, I'm facing right now some issues the bugs uh, they released a new update for which is the version 16.8.1 uh, but I haven't upgraded it yet so sometimes maybe you'll see some bugs with Visual Studio this new version okay so this is the API I'll go back to the counter I will refresh everything and then I'll go back to the okay great go back to fidget data let's see oh cool okay that's it guys we should remove this access token that we have been used for the previous session and uh this is everything for this session right now we are on .NET 5 on the amazing framework we can just basically go ahead and leverage all the features available especially for the blazer client or the client app so this is cool right now we have all the stuff ready and we can proceed with other functions uh, and the upcoming one is enabling swagger so and the open api so we have in this case uh, documentation for documentation for our api and we will complete the user profiles uh, service so guys i hope you enjoyed the session and uh, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the like the subscribe button to support us to make more and more stuff so thank you again and see you in the next video.